Hi everyone, hope you are doing good. Welcome to the next video on my YouTube channel. My name is Saurabh Bharti, Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional. This is my YouTube channel where I come and share my knowledge and experience with you all. So today we are going to talk about a new topic uh, in this uh, video series which I am starting now and which is around the inventory valuations, how it works. So it is, I have seen the inventory valuation and the reconciliation has been a very a basic problem in most of the implementation where we are having the stocks and the inventory, right? And many times we face a lot of issues related to the valuations, the reconciliation of your inventory with uh, trial balance or financials, and also understanding the different transactions which gets posted on a different stage of the process cycle, right? So there are a lot of things which we need to cover on this. But as a first part of this video series, what I thought is that let's start with the basic concepts around this inventory valuation from covering the basic, uh, the components which are very critical for us to understand before we move to any process or any specific uh, valuation method in Microsoft Dynamics 365. So that's the objective of this particular video. So uh, if you see my screen right now, so I have put couple of configurations which we need to understand, okay? So one of the configuration which we need to define uh, Okay, so the first requirement for us is to define the product, right? So your inventory will work based on the product what you create. Now, how that product is going to behave in terms of the valuation, in terms, in terms of uh, keeping the track of the inventory, how we are storing, right? There are a lot of factors around that, okay? And each and every factor has directly or indirectly impact on our valuation or the value calculation okay so that is why it is important to understand all these uh, factors first okay so one of the attribute which you need to specify on a product is the storage dimension now what is storage dimension uh, storage dimension defines that how we are going to store our inventory at what level i'm going to store my inventory for example, if you see what are the different possible storage location, the basic locations which we have on, uh, uh, on, on uh, in Microsoft Dynamics. So we can define sites, which every site will have some warehouse, which will have location and then further the locations might have the regs and the aisles, the further location defined, right? Now, when I'm defining my product and if I'm storing that product, is it going to track all the way down to the location or till the warehouse or only on the site, right? At what level this is going to store my inventory, that is what is defined using the storage dimension, okay? And that is where you will see in your demo data or places where the name has been given site, uh, site warehouse or site warehouse location, right? So depending on your requirement, uh, depending on your physical structure of your warehouse, right? You need to decide that how you are going to create your site, what is going to be the site, what is going to be warehouse, what is going to be the location. If you are not using advanced warehousing and if you are just going with simple uh, warehousing process plus the inventory valuation, I would suggest to keep things till the warehouse level to avoid the lot of data entry from the location perspective. Okay. So that is one of the critical information or the attribute which you need to define on your product master. Okay. The second thing is, okay, you are going to store your inventory or your product on a site and the warehouse level, right? But are you going to track them? And if yes, is it going to be tracked at a batch uh, number or a serial or a batch or serial both, right? Now it really depends on your, uh, the type of products you are dealing with. Okay. So if you have a product which needs to be tracked at a batch number, right? Uh, 
let's say or or at a serial number right you can define and enable the attributes these attributes for them now it is not necessary that all our products should follow the same storage dimension configuration and the tracking dimension configuration it, it can be the mix of these things so i can have a list of products right which follows the tracking dimension batch and the serial number i can have products which do not require any of the tracking so i can have the none for that okay and i can have product which just require the batch or the serial number so it is up to me that what is the diff uh, what are the different nature of the products i am using in my company and depending on that i need to attach these attributes and similarly it goes with the store storage dimension okay so hope that's clear so that is the first thing which we need to define along with that also it is very important for us to uh, define the unit of measurements uh, on the product from the inventory perspective now the product might have multiple uh, unit of measurement so it can be the purchase unit of measurement like how you are procuring your product it can be a sales unit of measurement that how you are uh, selling your product a bill of material if you are manufacturing something and then the inventory unit of measurement now in microsoft dynamics inventory unit of measurement is considered to be the base unit of measurement so whatever you define here it remains same across uh, uh, i mean the the in the product uh, across all the different things you cannot change it once it is defined and once you have the transaction associated with that and you can only have a one single uh, inventory unit of measurement for a product ideally this inventory unit of measurement should be your inventory or inventory unit of measurement in which you are going to perform your stock counts and other activity in the warehouse you might have multiple purchase unit of measurement sales unit of measurement that's possible but you can default only one on the product master okay and then you can define these things and it is mandatory to have like if our purchase and the sales unit of measurements are different uh, than the inventory then we need to uh, define the conversion for those unit of measurements uh, with the inventory unit of measurement so that system can understand if i'm buying a pack of 12 then it's a 12 quantity right so i can just uh, uh, identify that hope that's clear so then the next attribute which you have is around the item groups uh, majorly the item group is a categorization of the product and majorly used for defining the posting profile in the financials for different types of inventory transactions which we are posting like for example if i am posting a product receipt for raw material it should go in a different account if i am posting uh, the purchase invoice sales order invoice or the inventory transfer or inventory movement journal or the uh, adjustment journal right so which account it should post based on the grouping right is defined using the item group posting so that also needs to be defined then how when we when we define the product uh, this particular series will be more focused on the uh, more focused on the uh, the stocked product the inventory product we are going to talk about so how do we know that whether this product is the stock product or the non stock product okay so the basic understanding the nature of this product uh, whether it is a stock product or non stock is defined using the item model group so item model group attribute uh, again is a very critical attribute we need to understand this properly before we go and define this that what item model group will be associated with a product now in if you want you can have multiple item groups uh, for your processes depending on the nature of the uh, products which you are having okay so on the item model group you need to define whether it's a stock product or non stock and if it is a stock product then you need to define that what valuation method this particular product is going to follow so if it is going to follow fifo lifo weighted average weighted average by date moving average standard cost then you need to select that valuation math method on the 
uh, item model group and then the item model group will be uh, specified on the product master so it is very important for us to define the item model group okay i'm going to talk about the behavior of these uh, evaluation methods plus the different types of inventory transaction which gets created in this video series okay now let's say now your product is created it has been attached to item model group it has the unit of measurement it has the item group defined it has the storage it has the tracking dimensions defined right now based on this you have the basic uh, attributes which are very critical attributes which are required for your uh, product to behave in the inventory okay so that is defined there now let's understand when we talk about the inventory my product is there i'm going to post the different types of transaction uh, with my product okay now when i when i post the different types of product uh, different types of transaction i can have two different types of transaction with that and it is only two categories it can be from different uh, transactions but the only the type will be two one is that inward transaction in the inventory or the outward when i say inward means i am taking the inventory in on in in on my any of the location the outward is that i am issuing the inventory from one of my location now that location can be location or warehouse or the site okay only these two types of transactions are possible in the inventory okay but these transactions can result from the different areas so i can have a inward transaction from purchase order i can have a positive invo uh, inventory journal i can have a production order finishing and getting my inventory and so and the out same goes with outward i can have a sales order i can transfer something and i can have a negative uh, movement journal or negative adjustment journal uh, or anything right so the it can come from different areas but the nature of the transaction will be either inward transaction or the outward on a particular location okay now when we do the inward or outward transaction the both the transaction in microsoft dynamics 365 has two different natures and what is the nature it can be a physical inventory or it can be a financial inventory okay the physical inventory is nothing like uh, sometimes people get confused oh physical inventory is something where i just uh, receive the quantity and i don't have the value associated with that so that's not right okay both physical inventory and the financial inventory has the quantity and the value attached to it okay so physical inventory will have physical quantity and the physical value the financial inventory will have financial quantity and the financial value in a different uh, language you can always say that physical inventory quantity and the uh, quantity and the the value which i have associated with this particular uh, and with particular transaction is my estimated value okay and the financial value is my final value for that okay now the question comes how do i know what is my physical inventory transaction and what is my financial inventory transaction okay so if i talk about physical inventory transaction it is something which is been received or the shipped but not yet invoiced okay so that is my physical inventory for example purchase order product receipt sales order delivery or packing slip pick list report as finished in the production order are your typically physical inventory transactions and when these transaction gets converted into purchase order invoice customer sales order invoice production order and all the inventory journals which we post it or the transfer order these transactions are generally or, or 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 typically are the financial inventory transactions and the financial inventory transaction is your final valuation uh, i mean value based transaction which the value which the financial transaction holds generally is your final value for the stock so we need to understand the difference between the physical and the financial inventory because when we analyze the transaction and when we see the inventory valuation impact it really depends on these nature of the transaction because the if i just go ahead and see my physical inventory value and if i think that this is my final stock value then we are wrong because 
physical value is kind of a estimated value the final value is based on the financial value which we posted for that any particular transaction okay now if you talk about the inventory impact in microsoft dynamics 365 right it can be the receipt or the issue which means the inward or the outward basically right so it can be product receipt from purchase order packing slip from sales order po invoice so invoice production pick list raf production end inventory journals transfer orders right these are the typical transaction for the inventory okay and which has uh, a valuation impact uh, in microsoft dynamics now it can have plus or minus so product received is a yes uh, for this and no for this but you can have a issue also during the product receipt when you have a return order so those are the exceptions which we need to consider but having said that these are the typical transactions which are required for uh, inventory transactions to be posted in the system okay now uh, if we talk if you understand all these things till now so we we have discussed about the different attributes which are required for product uh, to be the stock product and what is the meaning of the physical and inventory uh, transactions and how the stock uh, any product is going to follow any specific valuation method and what are the category of the physical inventory and the financial inventory transactions so that sets up the base for us the next thing which we are going to talk about in the next video is about picking up that how the fifo will work how lifo will work or how weighted average will work or standard cost will work uh, in microsoft dynamics 365 and how do we reconcile how do we read the transactions uh, and what are the permutation combination scenarios are there so i'll try to explain you as much as possible as per is i mean based on my uh, knowledge in the experience but one of the key take away from here like when we talk about our inventory valuation our inventory valuation will be used only for the outward transactions which means when i issue the inventory then only my inventory valuation will get triggered my inventory valuation does not get triggered if i am receiving the inventory if it is inward why because when i receive the inventory quantity i have the value associated with that but when i issue it i just issue the quantity i do not have value to derive that value at what cost i am issuing the inventory is derived based on my valuation method and that is the importance of the valuation method so the term rule is the valuation method will get triggered only when i am issuing the inventory now issuing the inventory can happen from any of the transaction even it can happen from the product receipt when i am uh doing the return order okay so it can be from any type of transaction but the quantity has to be the negative i should take out the inventory from my warehouse or the location to trigger my valuation method okay and that is the fundamental thing which we need to remember about the inventory so it is very important for us to before we jump uh, to for the process is to understand these attributes and the key concept and the basic concept behind that okay so hope uh, this helps you to understand the basics about uh, inventory uh, transactions or the valuation uh, before we start with any specific valuation method i am going to uh, create a new video for that and i'm going to start with let's say weighted average and talk about the different transactions things which we have and let's see how it goes okay so that's it uh, for this video and uh, thank you for listening me and watching this video if you do like this then please go ahead and like share and subscribe and put on a comment like if you want me to create a video on any different topic if i know that topic i am going to create that thank you for uh watching and talk to you next time thank you